Hello everyone, welcome to International Marketing Class. Today, we're going to talk about the political environment and that covers Chapter 6. All the cultural elements are important in international marketing, but the political element is by far the most pervasive and must always be examined from both domestic and foreign country perspectives. Regardless of where a company does business, the political element is always a partner and further open and unpredictable one. Government both encourage and control business and the goal of a multinational company is to take steps to lower its political vulnerability. Our specific objectives for these chapters are let us understand how political environment can affect firms' decision building, customer satisfactions. Secondly, let us familiarize with the types of government, political parties, nationalism, targeted fear or animosity, and trade disputes that can affect the environment for marketing in foreign country. And lastly, after this chapter, let us be familiarized with the different political risks of global business and the factors that affect its stability. To start with, let us define first what is sovereignty. Sovereignty is the right of a government to have a complete control over its area. A sovereign government is the only maker of laws in the land, water or air, where international law says it is sovereign. A citizen is subject to the state's laws even outside the country's borders. Nations can and do abridge specific aspects of their sovereign rights to coexist with other nations. The European Union and NAFTA are the good examples of agreements between nations to give off their sovereignty for free trade and other common benefits. Some countries view the World Trade Organization as threat to sovereignty, the fear of relinquishing their nation's rights for a common goal that might not benefit or might be detrimental to their goals. So when we say relinquish, it means to give up or voluntarily cease to keep or claim. Foreign investment is also viewed as a threat to sovereignty. For example, it took many years after NAFTA was passed by the Mexican government to allow foreign companies to invest in the energy and banking sectors, which were government-controlled monopolies until then. Specifically, you can see the characteristic of a sovereign state. Okay? First, they can enjoy full legal equality with other states, independent and free from all external control, govern its own territory, they can vote, okay? they, they have a choice okay, for pol political uh, perspective, economic and social system, and they have a power to enter into agreements with other nations. What is political climate? Political climate is a peace and order and a peaceful way of implementing the rules and regulations of the government. The ideal climate for a multinational firm is stable and friendly government, but um, it is not always the case. Some government experiencing some problem because of radical shifts uh, in government philosophy, and there are some pressures from national and self-interest group and also there are some conflicts among governments and those issues could really affect the stability of the government and what are the main causes of instability number one is the inherent instability second is political shifts during elections impact trade conditions third is nationalism for this animosity toward the specific countries and fifth is a trade dispute a government is a system or a group of people governing an organized community, open a state. What are the different forms of government? Number one, we have the monarchy or dictatorship, wherein it is ruled by one. Number two, aristocracy or oligarchy, it is ruled by few. Then the third one is democracy, it is ruled by many. So 
it is depending on the country or state on how they're going to implement their rules and regulations. And there are more than 200 sovereign states on the planet. Almost all have at least nominally representative governments with universal suffrage for those 18 years and over. In about 10% of the nations, voting is required and the rest is voluntary. In Exhibit 6.1, you can see a sample of government types. From Afghanistan, Presidential Islamic Republic, up to the United States, uh, we're having a constitutional federal republic. Normally, if the, uh, the country is ruled by a um, monarch, they have a king or queen, and it rules a kingdom or empire. Okay. The, the monarch's power is limited by a constitution, but in an absolute monarchy, the monarch has unlimited power. For a communist government, it is a system in which states, plans, and controls the economy in a single open authoritarian. But for the uh, federal republic government, um, the people were given rights to choose and to decide for the, for the government. It's more unlike the people's power. As an international marketer, it is very important to know the different philosophies and all major political parties in the government. Why? Because knowing philosophies of all major political parties could be able to position the marketing strategy of the firm. And more so, um, any one of them might become dominant and later prevailing attitudes in the overall business climate. It is also important to know the political party's uh, philosophy because uh, it will give you a direction okay, on how and where you are going to sell your market, which price and what kind of rules and regulations you are going to do in your communication. In countries where two strong political parties typically succeed one another in control of the government, it is important to know the direction each party is likely to take. For example, in the United States, the Democratic Congress was reluctant to ratify free trade pacts negotiated by George Bush's Republican administration in the White House. Even so, President Obama was able to push through agreements with South Korea, Colombia, Colombia, and Panama in 2011. And of course, the nationalistic stand of uh, President Trump against uh, free trade uh, represents a great reversal of Republican Party preferences. And lastly, an astute international marketer must understand all aspects of the political landscape. Why? To be properly informed about the political environment. Unpredictable and drastic shifts in government policies deter investment whatever the cause of the shift. Another important factor in assessing business climate is Nationalism. Nationalism is an awakening of nations' people to pride in their country. This pride can uh, lead to anti-foreign business sentiment in the nation. Feelings of nationalism can be manifested in a variety of ways such as reaction of the American people and business toward Muslim na nations following 9-11. War or recession can create feelings of nationalism as well. Other ways that nationalism can manifest itself is in trade policies such as restrictions on imports from certain countries. For example, there is an imposition of tariffs on street imports from Vietnam, Thailand, and India in 2005 
to project U.S. Uh, shrimp farmers in the Gulf region. Also, we have the restrictive tariffs such as one of the France imposed on South American bananas and other barriers such as specific product standards or healthy standards that, uh, that the only countries industries are able to comply with. Okay. As an international uh, marketer, it is very important to, dis to describe or to know the difference between nationalism and targeted animosity. Nationalism is directed uh, generally to all foreign countries, while targeted animosity it is only directed toward a particular country. Like for example, the confusion that was mistaken made by Toyota in United States in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Sales of Japanese cars were declining in the States and an advertising campaign was designed and delivered that assumed the problem was American nationalism. However, nationalism was not clearly uh, the problem because of sales uh, of German cars were not experiencing the same kinds of decline. The properly defined problem was Americans' fear of Japan. During that time, Americans considered uh, Japan as one of the economic threats and greater than the military threat from the Soviet Union. So when Toyota spent millions of an advertising campaign showing cumbrous being made by Americans in a Toyota plant in Kentucky, it may well have exacerbated the fear that Japanese were colonizing the United States. And the last aspect of our political environment to be assessed is the trade disputes. Okay? Um, a narrow trade disputes themselves can royal broader international market. Any of these disputes that might boil over and affect other aspects of international trade but at least, at uh, this writing, cooler heads seem to be prevailing along with the World Trade Organization dispute resolution process. That is the uh, International Commercial Arbitration. Political issues happen when government implement an actions that enhance the risk of global business. Risk can range from confiscation, expropriation, and domestication. There are still lesser le uh, risks, but still significant, uh, like government rules and regulations, such as exchange controls, import restrictions, and price controls that directly affect the performance of business upon entry into other country. The most severe political risk is confiscation, that is the seizing of companies' assets without payment. So, uh, there are two notable confiscations of U.S. property occurred when Fidel Castro became the leader in Cuba and later when the Shah of Iran was overthrown. Uh, confiscation was most prevalent in the 1950s and 1960s when many underdeveloped countries saw confiscation as a means of economic growth. The second uh, political risk, this one is less drastic compared to confiscation, but still severe is expropriation. When the government seizes an investment but makes some reimbursement for the asset, for example, in 2008, the Chavez regime in Venezuela expropriated Mexico's Samex operations, paying a uh, negotiated price. It is when a uh, privately owned company will be converted to a nationalized company wherein the government will gonna run the entity. And the third type of risk is domestication. Uh, it happens when host country gradually costs the transfer of 
foreign investment to national control and ownership through a series of government decrees that mandate local ownership and greater national involvement in the company's management. Why the government is doing this? The ultimate goal of domestication is to force foreign investors to share more of the ownership, management, and profits with nationals than was the case before domestication. Besides political risk of global business, companies are still confronted with a variety of economic risks that can occur with little warning, like uh, exchange controls, local consent laws, uh, import restrictions, tax control, price controls, and lo uh, labor problems. These economic uh, risks are important and recurring part of the political environment that few international companies can avoid, for example, exchange controls. It happens from shortage of foreign uh, exchange currency uh, that is being held in by a country. Uh, you know that there are a lot of countries maintain regulations for control currency and should an economy suffer a setback or foreign exchange reserves decline severely, the controls on convertibility are imposed quickly. Another economic risk is when a local government implements a particular law. Example, in Thailand, they require that all milk products that contain at least 50% milk from local dairy from, uh, farmers. But this is with the contrary belief okay, in the third world countries. Uh, the European Union had a local consent requirements as high as 45% for a screwdriver operations that is a name uh, open given to foreign owned assemblers and NAPTA requires 62% local consent for all cars coming from the member countries. There are some selective restrictions on the import of consumer products. Raw materials, machines, and spare parts are very common strategies to force foreign industry to purchase more supplies within the host country and thereby create uh, markets for local industry. The objective is good, but there is some hamstring or sometimes it could interrupt the operations of established industries. Then the problem becomes critical when there are no adequately developed sources of supply within the country. And the fourth economic risk is tax control. For example, in the case of India, India seems to be particularly tough in this regard. For example, the government there at taxes Pepsi-Cola and the Coca-Cola company 40% on all soda bottled in India. And using a different angle of attack, India is attempting to collect 40,000 million in taxes on travel tickets sold online from Sambres, that is an airline reservation service, a data center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. For the undeveloped countries with econo economies constantly threatened with a shortage of funds, of, of funds, of course, a reasonable taxation of successful foreign investments appeal to some government officials as the handiest and quickest means of finding operating funds. The fifth economic risk is the price control. What are the common products that uh, uh, experience this kind of price controls commonly uh, from the pharmaceuticals, food, gasoline, and cars? Uh, they're often subjected to price controls. Of course, the side effect on it is that the local economy can be too slow or even stop capital investment. And the last one is the labor problems. In so many countries, labor unions have a strong government support that they use effectively in obtaining special concessions from business. Some of the countries, uh, they provide they do not allow layoff. Okay, profits may have to be shared, and an extra, extraordinary number of services may have to be provided. Like for example, in France, there's a belief in full uh, employment is almost religious in fervor, and 
there are some multinational companies are more powerful, powerful than local uh, labor unions like um, Walmart closed a store in Quebec rather than let it be unionized. Uh, in addition with uh, economic risks, one nation or a group of nations may boycott another nation, thereby stopping all trade between the countries. Or uh, that country may issue sanctions against uh, the trade of specific uh, products. A specific example is the United States. They have a very long-term boycotts of trade with Cuba and Iran and uh, has come under some criticism for its demand for continued sanctions against Cuba and its threats of future sanctions against countries that violate human rights issues. Another trade sanctions against Russia uh, for its interference in the 2016 election in the United States. The annexation of Crimea and its military operation Eastern Europe were approved by Congress and, set and signed by President Trump in August 2017. The history indicates that sanctions are almost always unsuccessful at reaching goals, um, particularly when other major nations traders ignore them. For example, with the case of Cuba, North Korea and Iran uh, were in the uh, there's an undesirable behavior that the sanctions were imposed to change uh, continues and who suffers? The only ones who seem to be hurt are the people and companies that get caught in the middle. And one of the obvious uh, case of these economic sanctions is when Korean people campaign to boycott uh, Japanese product here in South Korea. Definitely it will have a big impact on the local businesses as well as the uh, foreign investor in one country. Although not usually officially sanctioned by the government, the impact of political and social activities can also interrupt the normal flow of trade. PSAs can range from those who seek to bring about peaceful change to those who can resort to violence and terrorism to affect change. Every country has their own protesters, which call for the government to uh, action in a particular social issues. Especially nowadays, the internet and cell phones have become tools of PSAs and they call it keyboard warriors. This kind of propaganda, propaganda that causes the attention of people to participate in mass demonstration against the government. There are some um, non-government organizations uh, which are involved in protest, lobbying, and collaborations with the, with the government also okay, for some uh, personal invested uh, interest. Of course, none, uh, not all of the activists are against the government. Sometimes they are just uh, having their own advocacy like Greta Thunberg, the 16-year-old Swedish climate activist, and she had sparked a massive online response when she delivered a, a scathing speech at the United Nations General Assembly to shame leaders from around the world for their inaction on climate change. If you could take a look at the picture in the screen, the first one, and uh, she is uh, Greta Thunberg and the second one is Emma Gonzalez. They were the survivor okay, of the massacre that killed 17 of their classmates at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland. So they sparked uh, nev a hashtag never again movement. And in the third picture, you could see Yusuf Zai. Uh, Malala is upside 20 years old. Women's and girls' education is her advocacy. Ayuz Apsai was an activist long before she became the youngest Nobel Prize laureate in history in 2013, but she's uh, uh, since become a household name. So she grew up in Pakistan under Taliban occupations and they uh, 
run uh, a chain of school which inspires her in passion and public defense of women's education. Violence is another related risk of multinational companies to consider in assessing the political vulnerability of their activities oftentimes. Peaceful protests turn violence, as we have seen in recent years in many nations, including the United States, Russia, Egypt, and most recently, Hong Kong. Both sides usually um, blame the other for the initiations of violence, and as in any dispute, culpability is open and clear. What are the common reasons for this violence, terrorism, and war? Um, mo mostly, it, it came from the multinationals as uh, open targeted, like embarrasses government and its relationship with firms. It generates funds by kidnapping executives and inflicts terror within country. Most of United States attacks have been against businesses, so they need uh, to consider proximity of the violence and advice of local and foreign stakeholders. Don't you know that since September 11, okay, McDonald's, KFC, and Pizza Hut, a combined have been bombed in more than 10 countries, including in Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Russia, Lebanon, and China. Most attacks have been linked with militant Islamic group. Um, however, there are some uh, clash of civilizations or uh, conflict between countries that had been settled through negotiations. For example, with the recent histories of relatively peaceful dissolutions of the Union Soviet, the divorce of the Czech and Slovak republics, the marriage of East and West Germany, and Hong Kong uh, handover to China by the United Kingdom, and the current trade aventures between China and Taiwan and lastly with the even the almost bloodless annexation of Crimea by Russia had been settled for economic growth and for peaceful relationship. Another risk okay, that can affect the global business is the cyber terrorism and cyber crime. The internet provides a vehicle for terrorist and criminal attacks for foreign and domestic antagonists wishing to inflict damage on a company with little chance of being caught. Uh, tracing cyber terrorists and criminals is really hard to determine if a cyber attack has been launched by a rogue state. When we say rogue state, it is a dishonest or unprincipled country. These are commonly known as the hacker or are they going to do some prank or a deceitful act through online? If you are familiar with the I love you worm, that is a virus which caused an estimated $25 billion in damage, was a probably just an out of control uh, prank. And CNN, CDNet, Yahoo, and Amazon were not able to escape the Melissa virus and the denial of service attacks that overload different websites. Okay. And the government of China has been criticized for blocking message, uh, tech messages in strife-torn regions and disrupting the local operations of Google. So there are only particular platform uh, that they allowed in their country. And I think in China, they are using uh, WhatsApp Okay. And um, if you want to use Messenger or Facebook, you need to pay the, the government. And the common reasons why they are doing these cyber attacks, of course, some like robbery, political punishment, and political uh, potential national security attacks. There are a lot of reasons for a company to become politically vulnerable when we say Vulnerability is that you are easy to be penetrated by danger or susceptible to physical or emotional attack or harm. Some of them are like uh, political philosophies, economic variations, and cultural uh, differences. Some companies appear to be more politically vulnerable than others. 
in that they receive special government attention. So this attention might be positive actions toward the company or in negative attention. Uh, what are the other companies are doing to become uh, protected to this kind of vulnerability? Sometimes they are having a, a strong connection or linkages to the government agencies. Countries seeking investment in high priority industries may well excuse companies from taxes, custom duties, quotas, exchange controls, and other impediments to investment. But there is no uh, mathematical uh, formula uh, for your company to become less vulnerable. Different country has a different government profile and uh, the level of relationship from the foreign investor also varies. That's why as an international marketer, you have to be very careful on how are you going to connect with the government institutions. Although there are no specific formulas to determine a product's uh, vulnerability of, at any point, there are some generalizations that help identify the tendency for products to be politically sensitive. So what are those uh, generally perceived uh, that influence host country, like the product that is related to environment, exchange rates, national and economic security, welfare of people, particularly the children, publicly visible, subject to public debate, and associated with their country of origin. Other prominent examples are the U.S. government's suspicions of China's Huawei technology's entry into the American uh, telecommunications market in the interest of and financial a division of internet giant Alibaba in regarding with MoneyGram. Not only a government is concerned with some sensitive products and issues, so I know that you are familiar with PETA, people for the ethical treatment of animals. So they expose animal suffering in laboratories, in the food industry, in the clothing trade, and in the entertainment industry. So if your product is related to this kind of politically sensitive product, so it might be difficult for you to uh, enter into one country if they have a massive campaign against those kind of product, but still, uh, you can do some diversification wherein you can find other country to market your products. How global business PM could be able to protect their, their business into this kind of political risk. Okay? So number one, we could have the forecasting political risk. When we say forecasting political risk, it's a qualitative measure. Okay? Uh, of political vulnerability, a number of firms are employing this kind of systematic method to measure the impact of political risk in their peer. Okay, so this political risk uh, is an assessment to attempt to forecast uh, political instability to help management identify and evaluate political events and their potential influence on current and future international business decisions. Perhaps the greatest risk 
to international market or is the threat of the government actually failing, uh, which causes chaos in the streets and markets. And uh, there are some foreign policy magazines use as sole criteria to rank countries on its failed index. The, the list of criteria you can found in your book exhibit as 6.4 and the examples are also can be seen in your uh, screen the the colored uh, countries which is the highest and the lowest uh, uh, fragile states index score it shows how the government failed to control the, the society and which like they have a less power to govern in this area. So um, in the list, the number one okay, of the fragile states index is in the fragile states index of 2013 to 2019, you could see there Yemen, Somalia, and South Sudan uh, are the most uh, failed government. The common indicators include a state whose central government is so weak or ineffective that it has little practical control over of its territory, non-provision of public services, widespread corruption and criminality, refugees and involuntary movement of populations, and sharp economic decline. Of course, uh, global business cannot control this political vulnerability, okay? but rather uh, it can operate in a specific business venture that can take measure to lessen its degree of susceptibility to politically induced risk. Indeed, one study has shown uh, some multinational firms actually see opportunities in financial and political crisis. So what they are doing is they improve their relationship between governments and multinational companies like um, they improve countries' balance of payments, they use as locally produced resources, they transfer capital, technology, and skills, they create jobs, they make uh, tax contributions, and um, they help okay, the, the, the society, uh, they, they portray an image of being a philanthropy like you're doing their corporate social responsibility. In addition to corporate activities, uh, global business focus on the social and economic goals of the host country and good corporate citizenship. Multinational companies can use other strategies to minimize political vulnerability and risk. For example, um, the different strategies like licensing and franchising, plan domestication, expanding investment case, joint venture, political bargaining, and political pay, uh, pay ups. Okay. Uh, the first one is the licensing or franchising. So a strategy that, does, uh, that some firms find eliminates almost or is to license technology for fee. And licensing can be effective in situations in which the technology is unique and the risk is high. Next is the planned domestication. So in those cases in which a host country is demanding local participation, the most effective long-range solution is planned phasing out that is planned domestication. So this method is not referred uh, Prepared business practice, but the alternative of government initiated domestication can be as disastrous as confiscation. And next, we have the expanding the investment base. That this includes uh, uh, several investors, which might be the the political politically connected ones, and banks in financing in investment in the host country. So this approach has the advantage of engaging the power of the banks and or investors whenever any kind of government takeover or harassment is threatened. Next we have is the joint venture that is less susceptible to political harassment. Uh, harassment. Uh, joint ventures can be with locals or other third country multinational companies. In both cases, a company's financial exposure is limited. 
joint venture with local self-minimized and simultinational companies, Phoenix in a joint venture with another multinational company adds the additional bargaining power of a third country. The next is the political bargaining. Okay. So, multi companies who clearly engage in lobbying and other sorts of political bargaining can be able to avoid potential uh, political risk. So, this is more on like uh, we're gonna do a business and uh, what favor we could get from you and what favor you can get from our company. At least one study has shown that such political ties can have a positive influence on international marketing efforts. And next is the political uh, pay-ups. Uh, this is one of the approach to dealing with political vulnerability is the, the attempt to lessen political risk by paying those in power to intervene on behalf of multinational company. So sometimes it covers like uh, uh, the aspect of bribery. There are a lot of reasons that prove that governments could really benefit from foreign direct investors. Specifically, government encouraged foreign investors because of it could accelerate development of economy, it can create local employment, and it could transfer technology so as generate export sales and stimulate growth and development of local industry, and it could conserve foreign exchange. For example, in Australia, they invested funds for research and development and production projects, and they provide some subsidies, tax incentives, and feed-in tariffs. In Brazil, they have some tax incentives. In Japan, they have a feed-in tariffs for all renewable energy projects, and also they have a reinvestment tax in incentives. United Kingdom, they have a fit in tariffs for renewable source mandates and they also have tax exemptions, carbon tax floor, and in Europe and in European Union, uh, they have uh, emission trading exemptions. Government also and other agencies help companies seek opportunities worldwide. So like the Department of Commerce, International Trade Administration, Export Import Bank, Foreign Credit Insurance Association, Agency for International Development, and Overseas Private Investment Corporations. They are doing a lot of steps on how they could help the foreign investors and not also that but the other country as well. In the picture you could see uh, just recently the South Korean government had donated the Philippines uh, a coronavirus uh, medical kit or a testing kit. And also, uh, South Korea had do donated our country um, a million K a dollar amount of rice from South Korea. And in behalf of the Republic of the Philippines, we are very grateful for the country of South Korea for helping us in the midst of this kind of pandemic situation. In the end, it is really important for every marketer to evaluate uh, foreign markets with uh, the appreciation for the political environment of the country within which he or she plans to operate. Okay, you can take advantage with the government involvement in business activities abroad, especially foreign controlled business is generally much greater than business is accustomed to in different countries. So I hope that you'd learn a lot from our political environment and you will know how are you going to position your company resources, the, the company uh, goal in entering into other country in relation with the political environment. And if you have any further questions, just send me an email and I will be much willing to answer all of your queries. Thank you and have a nice day.